in the year 2023, I'm gonna be building a brand new Nintendo Game Boy, which was originally released all the way back in 1989. All the parts are brand spanking new, with the exception of the CPU, which I'll need to harvest. But we won't be using any ordinary CPU from a stock Game Boy. No, instead I'll be salvaging one from this, a Super Game Boy cartridge for the Super Nintendo, for reasons I'll be talking about in just a moment. Now this whole project was made possible by the Super DMG Kit, a completely reverse engineered DMG motherboard with a few modern twists. So let's take a look. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today I'll be showing you a really neat project for the original Game Boy DMG that offers a direct replacement motherboard, audio board, and power board for the console. This project, which is being sold by JNT Studios, is based on the open source project created by Kamikane, which leverages additional work done on reverse engineering the DMG motherboard by Bit9, Gekio, as well as 3D scans done by Wesk for the DMG shell, which allowed Kamikane to test fit these boards virtually. This is what I love about this community, folks working with each other to create these amazing projects that benefit everyone. Now, because this is an open source project, you can of course build your own, or you can simply purchase a kit from JNT Studios, which comes with the boards pre-assembled for you. All you need to do is install a donor DMG CPU and assemble the console. However, instead of just putting in a standard DMG CPU from a Game Boy, let's make things interesting by putting in the CPU from a Super Game Boy cartridge. For those of you that don't know, the Super Game Boy is an accessory that allows Game Boy cartridges to be played on a Super Nintendo console. It basically contains all the hardware of a Game Boy DMG. So why am I using the CPU from a Super Game Boy cartridge instead of one from a regular DMG console? Well, the Super Game Boy CPU allows you to bypass the Nintendo splash screen when you first turn the console on and boot directly into your game, essentially saving you a few seconds. Overall, it's just a minor benefit, but I do think it's really cool that swapping the CPU from a Super Game Boy cartridge is even possible. Now, I do have to preface that swapping the CPU is not unique to this custom motherboard. You can actually also swap the CPU directly to the original DMG motherboard as well and get the same benefit. Which begs the question, why am I showing you this project in the first place? Well, the coolest thing about this project is that we now have full replacement boards for the DMG, which are essentially brand new with all new passive components. We can pretty much build a brand new Game Boy or replace damaged boards that have succumbed to, for example, leaking batteries or exhibit other irreparable damage. To me, this is the next step in console preservation. As these consoles age, projects like these are able to give new life to damaged systems. It's a great trend in the retro modding community, and I plan to cover more amazing projects like this in the future. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you all the parts I'll be using to build a brand new Game Boy console. Then I'll show you how to put it all together, go over all the unique features, review the pros and cons, and of course, provide you with my overall thoughts. So at the center of this build is the Super DMG mainboard. This has all the passive components and only requires you to install the CPU here, as well as a link port, which while optional, I strongly recommend. Now we'll be pulling the CPU from this, a Japanese Super Game Boy cartridge. You can use either a North American or Japanese version since the DMG is region free. Now the kit also comes with this audio board, which has an internal amp, allowing you to really crank the volume. Additionally, JNT Studios includes this power board created by the folks over at Retro Game Restore, the same people who make those really amazing clear NES and PC Engine shells. And the last item included in the kit are these cables to connect all the boards together. Now to really round the build off, I got a bunch of parts from Retro Game Repair Shop, like the funny playing Retro Pixel IPS kit, these buttons, membranes and speaker, as well as this IPS ready funny playing shell. I'll have links to all these parts down below in the video description. All right, so that's everything I'll be using to build a brand new Game Boy in 2023. But before we get into the installation, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video, P3 
PCB way. If you have a cool idea for a new mod or want to assemble an open source project, PCB way provides you with all the tools to make them a reality. From 3D printing services in an array of materials, all the way to other services like CNC machining, injection molding, and of course, PCB and flex ribbon fabrication. So when it comes to taking your retro gaming mods to the next level, PCB Way is the place to make that happen. Check out the link in the description for PCB Way to get $5 off your first order. And again, a huge thank you to PCB Way for sponsoring this video. All right, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and build this brand new Game Boy. All right, to get started, we're gonna first harvest the CPU from the Super Game Boy cartridge. So let's go ahead and tear it down. Okay, once we get to the circuit board, we'll need to identify the CPU, which is this chip right here. Go ahead and apply flux to the pins, and then with a hot air station, heat it up until it can safely be removed. Fantastic, and here's the Super Game Boy CPU fully extracted. Now we can grab our Super DMG motherboard and then place the CPU on it, making sure it's oriented correctly and lined up with all the pads. Now what I like to do is tack in a single leg and then ensure that all the pins are still aligned with the pads and then proceed to soldering in the remaining pins. Also, flux is your friend during this process and I definitely use quite a bit which helps prevent bridging and generates fantastic solder joints. If you're interested in checking out the specific flux and other tools and products that I use for modding, definitely check out my Amazon store which I have linked down below. Another tip for soldering chips like this is that I do a first round of sort of rough soldering, then I come back in for a second round to refine all the solder joints so that they look good and are solid. And here's what our Super Game Boy CPU looks like all soldered in place. Next, we're gonna go ahead and solder the power and audio cables to the motherboard. We'll first start with the power cable. Definitely reference the diagrams on the JNT Studios website as the color of the cables you get may be different from mine. You definitely wanna make sure that you wire these correctly or you could damage your console. Next, go ahead and solder in the five wire cable for the audio board. Now let's go ahead and prep our speaker by first removing the attached wires. And then solder in the included audio cable with the JST termination to the speaker. The black and red wires can be soldered to either side as the polarity doesn't matter. The aftermarket power switch on this is a bit too long, so we do need to trim off about two to three millimeters of length and then smooth it out with a file. And if you're going for completeness, you'll also want to salvage the link port and install it also. While not strictly necessary, as the Game Boy will function without it, it's nice to have, especially if you play games that utilize the port, such as Pokemon. Once that's done, we can now connect both the audio and power board to the motherboard. And then drop everything into the rear shell. and this is what the rear shell should look like when it's fully assembled. Next, let's set up the IPS display by dropping it into the 3D printed aligning bracket. Then drop it into the front shell. Now we can go ahead and drop in the buttons, membranes, speaker, followed by the large front circuit board.
Once everything is in, be sure to connect the LCD ribbon cable to the front circuit board. And then connect the speaker to the audio board. Next, connect the two halves together with the large ribbon cable, ensuring that the contacts are facing down, and then you can button up the entire console. Drop in some fresh batteries, insert your favorite game, and there you have it. We just built a brand new Game Boy. All right, so we have this beautiful Game Boy and it's all decked out with the latest mods. And best of all, it's pretty much almost brand new. The work of Kamakane, Bit9, Gekio, and Wesk really came through and now we have the means to basically preserve the Game Boy for the foreseeable future. These boards have been made open source, so if you ever have a completely damaged motherboard, you should be able to repair it, given that it still has a good CPU. Then you can rebuild it and get it up and running again, which is simply amazing. Anyway, with the DMG all set up, let's now go over the features. So really, there's not much to say here. We effectively have a brand new Game Boy minus the CPU, and we can now load games instantly thanks to the CPU we harvested from the Super Game Boy cartridge. Here's a side-by-side -side view of a Game Boy with a standard DMG CPU versus our modded system with a Super Game Boy CPU. And we can see that Pokemon loads instantly with our new build, while the stock unit is still on the splash screen. Also, the audio amp on this thing is really powerful. It gets super loud. Just for comparison, here's a stock DMG at full volume. And here is the Super DMG, and just a warning, this gets pretty loud, so adjust your volume accordingly. In three, two, one. Yeah, this thing gets crazy loud, and surprisingly the audio is not distorted at full blast, which is pretty awesome but also this level of loudness is kind of unnecessary. So really, those are kind of the advertised features of this build. But the main thing about this kit, like I said before, is that it allows you to resurrect damaged consoles. And that's really what it's all about. Old Game Boys that are broken or don't work could get a second lease on life by transferring the working CPU to this motherboard. With other preservation projects like the Open Tendo and Necessity for the NES, and new projects that I've seen recently, like for the PC Engine, it's a great trend going on in the modding community, and I hope it continues. All right, now take a look at this. This is even crazier. So I have my new DMG, and here I have a brand new game just created by another person in the community. It's called Raven's Core. This was sent to the channel by someone I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with, Blaine Locklear, who also has his own YouTube channel. He developed and manufactured this brand new game, and here I am playing it on this brand new Game Boy. What a time we live in. Anyway, now that we went over the features of this kit, let's go over the pros and cons. Let's start with the pros. First, this is an incredible project which really helps enable the preservation of the original Game Boy. It can give new life to dead consoles, which in and of itself is pretty darn awesome. Also, with my particular configuration, with the Super Game Boy CPU, games launch instantly. While this is a tiny pro, I think it's pretty cool. And really, just the mere existence of a project like this on its own, coupled with the fact that it's open source, is the most important pro for sure. Anyway, those are the pros. But now, let's get into the cons. And for this project, how could there possibly be any cons? It's open source, so anyone has access to it, and it provides an avenue to help preserve the Game Boy for the foreseeable future. Work like this is extremely valuable to the retro community, and I really do hope we see more projects like this in the future. Well folks, there you have it. The Super DMG, a reverse engineered Game Boy motherboard. Now if you enjoyed this video, I really think you'll like this one here, so check it out. And as always, thank you all so much for tuning in today, and I'll catch you again next Thursday.